Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Today we're going to be looking at defensive ammo from Freedom Munitions. Uh, they call it their Extreme Defensive Carry. And um, I wasn't able to find much in the way of tests of this ammunition online. Now, Freedom Munitions has a bit of a checkered reputation. Um, a number of people have commented negatively on their uh, remanufactured ammo. I wouldn't know because I spent the extra buck and got the new stuff. And for target slash range ammo, it's been fine. But um, I wanted to try out the x -Def. Now, this is a bonded jacket hollow point. And uh, it comes in 115 grain, 135 grain, and 147 grain. All of them are rated plus P. I don't particularly notice that when I'm firing them, but you know, I haven't chronographed them, so I don't know. I thought the gel tests were going to be more telling. So I ran an FBI spec um, test, sort of. I use clear ballistics gel instead of actual animal gel because it's just so much easier to deal with. The gun we're testing in is the Sig Sauer P6, which has a three and three quarter inch barrel. So that's going to be very like a lot of your carry guns, like the Glock 19 and things. It's in the same range. And uh, I have to say, you cannot tell these apart. Aside from reading the label on the box, the profile of all three bullets and the configuration appears to be identical on all three hollow points, which I have to say does not inspire a great deal of confidence. Um, because typically with bullets of different weights and different velocities, you're going to want to change things up. And it does not appear that they have, at least to uh, exterior examination, I'm not going to cut bullets in half to examine the hollow point cavity. Instead, we're just going to test them and see what we get. So, penetration of the 115 grain plus P appears to be a total penetration of 15 and a half inches. And the bullet appears to have not expanded at all. We'll have a look at that when we pull it out. With the 135 grain, overall expansion appears to be, um, well, it <laughs> doesn't look like it expanded. We'll find out when we dig it up. And that penetrated overall depth of 18 inches. This is not looking particularly hopeful. And the 147 grain, 27 inches of penetration with a tumble at the end, no apparent expansion. Again, this is not good. And we're back. So, as you saw, the um, the gel results were not inspiring. I did try to film the bullet impacts, but between the unspectacular performance of the bullets and the cloudiness of the gel, it just didn't look like anything, so I'm not going to waste your time with it. Now, to look over the bullets fired, we have the 115 grain actually did exhibit some expansion. It's weird expansion, and... It almost looks like it hit something, but the gel was a clean block. I, I don't know what it could possibly have hit. There's also some sort of foreign substance embedded deep into the hollow point that is not denim. I I can't account for that because there's, there's nothing in the block. There was nothing between me and the block except denim. So I don't know what's going on there. So, um... I'm not going to say that's good expansion because it's it's pretty superficial and only on one side and not good. However, it shines compared to the 135 grain where the hollow point stuffed up with denim and only opened up very, very slightly. Not even enough to count as expansion. And then last but not least or last but least, we have the 147 grain, which stuffed up with denim and overpenetrated. So, um, well, damn it. I mean, despite my high hopes and unbridled optimism, um, none of these bullets really performed acceptably. And while tests vary, conditions vary, people get different results, eh, I'm going to have to go with no on these. Um, maybe they'd perform out of a carbine? I don't know.
But uh, yeah, if you were considering the use for defensive carry in your handgun, I would say don't. And on that sad note, I hope you're all doing well. Stay safe and take care, and we'll talk to you next time.